one. Hey everybody, Scott Jansen here. Welcome back to another 100K coaching program student interview. Today we've got the awesome Andrea Delia with us today. Uh, we're going to be taking a deep dive into her business. Andrea's got a really cool story. A lot of great things have been happening with her business since starting the program in a very short amount of time, which I'm really excited about to talk to her about. We're also going to find out what goals um, Andrea has moving forward into the business, what her long-term or short-term goals are, what her niche is, and ultimately what she's doing to grow and scale her business. So Andrea, thank you so much for actually joining us. Thanks for having me, Scott. Awesome. So look, as per usual, let's start from the start. Let's start even before you got into hypnotherapy. What were you doing with your life? Were you working in a corporate job? And then what made you get into hypnotherapy and coaching and things like that? Right. So I actually had left my corporate job. I had been in corporate IT for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last company that I was in closed down. And I spent a year laying people off and shutting off systems. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah, so fun. The longest <laughs> goodbye of my life, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, there's just kind of something that switched when like you just close things down and they just turn off and just drift away. And I just couldn't see myself going forward doing that. So I ventured out. I never want, I, the most reluctant entrepreneur, I think in the history of ever, <laughs> never, never had any plans to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. or be a business owner. Um, and suddenly I had this not wanting to climb the corporate ladder anymore or, or go do that. So um, I actually um, went out and did some training. I got Reiki certified. And once I learned that, I learned some other energy healing modalities and um, I learned really quick though, in that, that, that wasn't an income, like a mm -hmm. corporate life income, mm -hmm. like a career income. It just wasn't working out that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because of my time in the corporate world and the people that I was used to working with, uh, there was kind of a little per some perception of woo versus tangible <laughs> type of transformational yeah. thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And so I definitely wanted, I was seeking something that came with being, if you want to be a professional in the professional world, you have a professional designation. Mm -hmm. And so um, I wanted something that had more of a professional designation. And I also wanted something that was a little bit more um, kind of direct and mm -hmm. clear cut mm -hmm. for my clients. And so that led me down the path into the hypnotherapy world. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, I knew I was in the right place then. So. Awesome. So you said before you definitely didn't have the mind of an entrepreneur. Like it's yeah. such a big switch now for what you're doing. What's different now? What made you think, you know what, maybe I can do this. Um, well, that's interesting. Uh, at first I was like, well, let me try something out <laughs> and see, I think what it was in my corporate life, um, the last kind of maybe the last phase of my corporate life, I spent a lot of time in leadership roles mm -hmm. and I, I always kind of was more of a uh, heart led leader and I spent more time getting to know my people and learning and understand kind of how motivate what motivates people. And mm -hmm. I really just saw people like, you know, struggling at work, but it wasn't work that was mm -hmm. causing struggles. It was stress at home. It was relationships. It was things like that. And the more that I was human with my teams and with my people, the more, human that we you know we could change we, that we could interact and mm -hmm. work our way through challenges and problems and so um, I think the thing was is that even in my the latter part of my corporate life I loved working with the people I loved leading coaching mm -hmm. I learned that if I made them better they solved all the problems I didn't have yeah. any, like they made my job so easy yeah when I empowered them and removed roadblocks for them and just made life better for them, they loved it. Like mm -hmm. they got stuff done. Mm -hmm. And so it got to the point where it was like, well, can I just do that and skip all the politic, the politic, <laughs> you know, nonsensical things that are just overhead part of corporate. And mm -hmm. there wasn't really a place for that really in corporate. And I was like, well, let me just see if I can find my own way into mm -hmm. how to do this. Okay. So, and you jumped into Reiki. What interested you about the Reiki side of things? Uh, I had time and money. Um, <laughs> literally, at a meetup. <laughs> I had not much work to do. Mm -hmm. I saw a Reiki class come across my email for mm -hmm. like a meetup, and there was a level one Reiki class. I'm like, I've heard okay. of this twice. 
and I have no meetings on my calendar and I'm still on the payroll, I guess I'll go do that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it started. Um, and I think that experience for me was kind of interesting because I was like, I didn't know much. I didn't know anything about Reiki. I just heard about it, but no clue. Mm -hmm. And I think the process of just getting connected with it, going through some training with it, et cetera. And it was like, wow, you can do these things for people. Like you can help people shift in this way. And I mean, you know, I enjoyed the experience as well. Um, but what, you know, I'm a learner and I, and I'm kind of like, once I learn one thing and they're like, oh, you can, you know, we'll do Reiki too, but not for three more months. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to help people with like, this is like level one. Mm. How am I supposed to help people that are coming that have deeper hurts? Yeah. You know, people come and you can just tell they have deeper hurts. There's deeper things there. And I was like, well, I can't wait three months. I need to keep going. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of started reaching out and looking for other things. I got a motion code certified because that was interactive. I actually okay. got that certification so I could go work with foster kids. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I was scheduled, yeah, I was scheduled to go speak to a group of foster kids. And I was like, they're not going to, they're not going to play with this Reiki thing. It's too <laughs> intangible thing. Like I need something people can relate to and like mm -hmm. get their hands involved in. So I had done that and, um, which was cool because I showed kids, you know, angry foster kids, how to do <laughs> muscle testing and awesome. tap into their energy and stuff. And they loved it. Like 12 angry foster kids who are like, why is this blonde chick in here? <laughs> yeah. Um, corporate world <laughs> and they were engaged and interacting and it was just like I had all these teens around me like going this is cool do me show me how to do this and, and it was like okay this works this is fun. awesome that's yeah. cool so, so what happened wasn't next enough. wasn't enough that was my next question what happened next because I know you've got a lot of certifications I do yeah uh, so it wasn't enough. Um, what was happening was I was using kind of emotional healing. I did some studying with Donna Eden, energy medicine. I mean, I just, Cindy Dale, I just started, you know, digesting all kinds of, um, I can get a book, a webinar and just incorporate, you know, mm. information and start rolling with it. But what was happening was as I was working with um, mostly kind of professional women, career oriented mm -hmm. women, uh, really kind of more working in like what I call like being heart wall space or being blocked mm. off mm -hmm. kind of. Um, and we were, I was having some really great results with clients, but what I was finding is they, we would do all that kind of emotional healing work and maybe start tapping into a spiritual journey, but behaviorally, like they, they stay in certain behaviors that they couldn't break or mm. they go back to work, like kind of packing emotional baggage back on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nope, we haven't gotten there yet. There's, mm -hmm. there's got to be something going on up here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I knew there had to be something going on. The mind had to have a piece to do with it. It's a piece of the system. And I, since I came from IT, everything to me is a system, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So everything is about a system and a process. And, um, and I was, I knew I didn't want to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist or mm -hmm. a counselor, or I didn't want to do those. And, um, I, it was funny. I kind of stalked Marissa Pierre and RTT, her RTT online for about a year. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. All right. I kind of, yeah. I kind of stalked her for a year <laughs> and um, <laughs> it was interesting. I kind of sort of thought hypnotherapy or RTT was going to like beyond my, uh, my ability or mm. permission. I don't know mm -hmm. what the hell it was. <laughs> but at the time it was like, that's for smarter people than me. Mm -hmm. Who am I to do that? Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, I don't know. I just, I like the con the contract work that I was doing completely fell apart. Mm. And from an income perspective, I had a company that owed me close to 40,000 us dollars, wow. shut their doors and oh, wow. Yeah. And not pay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, clients were showing up and I, it was kind of, I kind of just had this kind of meltdown moment that said, okay we're either going to get serious about this and we're going to, we're going to do this and I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to get the right support, the right tools, and we're going to make a business out of this, or I'm just going to shut up and go back to corporate America. And okay. this off. so it was like, it's either get back in the boat or go back or burn the boats and get your butt in gear. <laughs> and yeah. that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of how it happened. And so, um, I, uh, started my training 
and started using some of the tools just even in practice with existing clients before mm -hmm. I even finished my certification. And I, I knew that finding the root cause and finding exactly the right pieces of information in the subconscious just was creating such instantaneous results. Yeah. And I'm like, yep, I want more of that. And I want <laughs> my clients to have, that's what we're going to start with all the time. Okay. How long so, was this like training phase of yours? Was it like a couple of years or was it a couple of months? No, it was really only about three months. Okay. Um, I did an online portion and then I went to a five day live mm -hmm. portion. Okay. And by the time I was done with that, I had my certification. Okay. And um, I, before I went to training, I, I, and I had a small network. I mean, I had not a big, net, not a huge network, but mm -hmm. I did have a small network. I was out networking at women's networking groups or, you know, business owner, entrepreneur groups, et cetera. So um, I had been out kind of building community and connections mm -hmm. a bit. And so I had just put some information out to some of my community or, you know, clients that had worked with me that we had good results, but I knew had a little bit more and they'd be willing to test something with me. And so I said, Hey, I've been online doing online training. I'm leaving next month to go finish the certification mm -hmm. and I'll be able to take paying clients. Here's the program that I'm going to offer. Mm -hmm. Here's the value that it's going to be, but I'm going to give you, you know, X number of people kind of an opportunity to pay me, you know, low bar. Right. Cause uh, when I come back, my prices are going to go up. And so even before I left finishing my training, I, a handful, five or six clients. Okay. What were they coming then, to see you for? Um, so I asked for specific things. So I asked for money okay. blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked for weight. Um, I asked for unresolved childhood trauma. Mm. I okay. asked for um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, kind of three or four specific things that I was like, I want to see how this process works. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that. How also was to see what I liked. That was my next question. And how was that received? Like, did you get a lot of pushback? Were people really interested in doing this stuff with you? What, what happened? Um, people were really interested. Hmm. Um, they were very interested actually in doing it. Um, and it's interesting because when you offer something at a super low price, you get a certain type of clients that will come. And then when you raise your prices, those clients don't come <laughs> anymore. You have new, you have different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice because when you start really low, people will come and they will step in and they're mm -hmm. curious and they, and maybe if they wouldn't invest in themselves at a higher level be mm -hmm. before, after that, it's kind of a, it gives them an opportunity to do that. And actually I've had clients that did that lower investment came back and paid me more. Isn't that interesting? Always pay for the results. That's and cool. they said, I worked the first time and now I want to work on this. And I know you're charging more and I'll pay it. That's awesome. It was so, cool. It was very yeah. Cool. So was that 2019 or 2018? That was 2019. And okay. so I spent 2019, 2018 was the year of what I call catastrophic failing forward. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> you just, <laughs> right. I hired the wrong coaches and paid mm -hmm. a ton of money. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, that I did some contracting and didn't get paid the money. <laughs> yeah. What a wake <laughs> up <thing>. call. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it really was a year of like, do you really want to do this? Yeah. Or do you want to put your boots back on and just, nobody's going to blame you if you turn around and go back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> go nobody back to will default. blame you at all. <laughs> yeah. Go back to yeah, default. What was easy? Do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody will totally get it. <laughs> yeah. So. so 2019, you've made that decision. You know, I have to do this. I'm going to do it properly. Um, so you finish your certification. You're seeing a couple of clients here or there. What happened next? How did you start to work through and think, okay, I need to make this a business. What did you do next? Um, so I knew that in order to have a business, I needed some capital to invest in support and resources a bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I did get another contract role. Mm -hmm. And so I worked part-time, I worked contract IT part-time and, um, and then kind of upped my prices and got kind of more specific about how I wanted to run my business. Mm -hmm. Um, the service offering that I wanted to offer for my clients. Mm -hmm. And so for th about four or five months, I did that. I hired a coach that helped me have a, like understand sales conversation mm -hmm. 
and how to, how to have a sales conversation with people. Because mm -hmm. I was out there in all these business trainings and their stuff, and they're like, in your sales conversation, and one of those trainings, I was like, okay, can I be the dummy in the room and go, what <laughs> is sales conversation? I've never heard mm -hmm. of this before. Yeah. Uh, so I hired somebody for that, which was cool. And um, I'm also, like I said, I'm from IT. So there were just very simple systems that I wanted. I wanted to be able to just, you know, I wanted to be able to have a system where I could have all my contracts and all that kind of stuff online mm -hmm. and be able to automate that. Not high overhead kind of stuff, right? Just, yeah. um, and um, I wanted to be able to prove that I could make as much money in my business as I could make in my career. Okay. As my income started, I didn't want the, pr I wanted to take the pressure off my business mm -hmm. of just being able to be present with my clients, focus mm -hmm. on results with them, kind of learn the process more, get comfortable with the techniques that I was using, mm -hmm. kind of flesh out, do it, if I do it this way, if I do it this way, right, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was nice because at least having the contract work, it took the pressure off my business to have to be perfect and perform right now mm -hmm. and let me just kind of grow and evolve it. So it started like I was making $2,500 a month. Then it was, I was making $3,500 a month. And then I was making $5,000 a month. And then I, then I hit 7,000 and I'm like, okay, I've almost met my income of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I can do this. And, um, and in January of this year, 2020, so my contract ended at the end of December. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I wasn't doing any marketing whatsoever. It was just results from networking, okay. online presence, minimal online presence, referrals. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client show, I had a $10,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally, and yeah. I went, I went, okay, that is minimum income that I need to be able to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, I have kept growing my business income. It's time to, it's time to, if you can focus full time, have the right systems and things in place, then you can do this. You can do this more than once. Yeah. Okay. So that was kind of how I got there. What was the process for you at the time uh, last year? Um, to go from like a, a stranger to a paying client in that sales process you talked about, what was it exactly? Um, so the process that I went through was first of all, um, kind of the same thing I did in corporate world IT is understanding your customer's pain, right? Mm -hmm. What is their pain? Mm -hmm. What is they're struggling with? Hearing them, validating them and offering them a solution mm -hmm. that solves that pain. Mm -hmm. And you know, sharing that with them and then, you know, say, great, I, here's what I hear you're struggling with and we can absolutely solve for that. Mm -hmm. Here's how we solve that just kind of at a high level. Here's the process we use for solve for that. Um, how would it, you know, how would it feel for you to not have to carry that anymore? How would it feel mm -hmm. to be done with that? How would mm -hmm. it be, you know, how would it feel to move forward? And even um, learning to share like, I recently worked with a client that did X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. or if I had somebody up here that I knew had worked with somebody with a similar issue and, you know, kind of the shift and change. And so kind of showing them that they're, this process can help them. Mm -hmm. And here's how I do that. Here's the price range that I work in. What sounds like, what sounds like the right decision for you? Mm -hmm. And just listening. And really it was more about an invitation if it was mm -hmm. a fit for them mm -hmm. and if the timing was right. Um, and it was really amazing how it's an, it was an easy yes for people or no. And awesome. the ones who said no is like, okay, sure, mm -hmm. no problem. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to ask a few questions, but I'm not here to sell you through your objections and this and that. Mm -hmm. By this point, you're either in or you're not. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> kind of thing, right? Yeah. And so. Yeah. So that, that became, once I became really comfortable with that, it wasn't even a sales conversation. People were mm. coming to me. They're like, okay, I need to know what you do. Cause someone so is happy <laughs> and confident and like has stopped drinking and, and is killing it in their business, making, you know, five, $10,000 more. What did you do for them? Cause I want that. <laughs> and so sometimes yeah. people were coming to me already telling me <laughs> yeah. that whatever Selling you themselves. do is awesome. Tell me what you, what you want. Where do I yeah. sign? Awesome. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of how that process worked. And so it wasn't even really about sales. And once I got that down, I was like, well, shoot, I just have to have more people to talk to. 
Okay. Um, so you had your $10,000 month, which is always a good feeling, I think. What happened next? So that's in January, was it, that you had your 10000 Okay, what happened next? What made you think, okay, I've just done 10000 I can just repeat that same thing. Why did you need to get extra help? Because it took a lot of time to mm-hmm. go farm those clients for that $10,000 a month. Okay. It took a lot of time. Okay, as in And I didn't have exactly? that time every month. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I, there, yeah, because if you're spending that much time to find clients and then you get an inflow, it's, it's a, it was a balance. It was out of balance. Mm. And so, and I was like, well, I can't take three more months mm. to get another $10,000 a month or find that many clients. That's not good. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. So right. literally it would take like two or three months just to make a $10,000 a month and you need another two or three months to repeat it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So what, what happened, like what happened? Yeah, I'm definitely not going to do that. There's an easier <laughs> way. What yeah. happened next? How did you, or what, were, when you were experiencing that and you realized coming from a systems background, this is really awesome. Like seeing that it was going to take you another couple of months just to reach 10 again. What was the pain exactly that you were feeling to make you think something has to change? Um, the pain was that there were too many coaches in the market. There were too many marketers in the market there's just a lot of noise in the market. A lot of people I can teach you, I can show you, I can this, I can that. And I'd already been through a number of those kind of people. Mm -hmm. Um, And the big, the pain was, is how to structure my time, Mm -hmm. what activities to do, et cetera, to have a system running in place. Cause I felt like every day I was starting from zero. Mm -hmm. Right am I going to go networking today? Am I, what am I doing today? Right. And, and in the corporate world, especially in it, like we have a rhythm of business, you know, like you start with your goals at the beginning of the, like you just have a pattern and a path of working and operating. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that at all. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to have a business, I want that it's, and, and I don't want this class on Facebook ads and I don't want, (laughs) I just, I don't want crap. (laughs) I want a system and a process that works Mm. that I can work within. That's not taking, that doesn't take me six months to do that. Mm. Like I didn't have time for that. And I didn't need a coach. Mm -hmm. I needed like, it's, I wasn't looking for a coach, like a mindset or a belief or this or that coach. It was more of a, like a coach, like a Mm. Scott, but that said, that's, here's the process, here's the steps, here's what you do, et cetera. Because if I'm being a project manager originally, if I have a plan and a path, I know how to do that. Mm. And I know how to, if I, if this isn't working for me, it's like, oh, I know how to work my way through that though. But if I kind of have a plan and a path, I'm like, oh, well, I can do that. Mm-hmm. That's easy. Um, but it was, it just was too vague and too unclear. Okay. Um, there was just, and there were, and there was too much noise on the market, in the market. Everybody yeah, was absolutely. six figure business, this and that, but not in this business. Yes. This um, is a different business. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, what were you looking for exactly like? Because usually when we go to find a course or to extend our knowledge, we say, okay, I think I need this in my life or my business. I'm going to go find a course or some knowledge on that thing specifically. Where did you start looking? Um, it's not that I was actively looking. It was, I was waiting to see what showed up. Okay. Interesting. So I'm kind of a person that says, okay, I know that I need accountability. Mm -hmm. I want the accountability. I wanted the accountability. I wanted some specific steps. Um, and I wanted someone, I, I really wanted somebody that knew this business or that, that also, worked at a professional level. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of coaches out there that are, I love them. They're well-meaning people, but they're not, they're not professionals and they don't work with professionals. Mm. And so, and, but, and, uh, but I also wasn't willing to invest another 10 or $15,000 on something mm. that I wasn't sure was going to work. I had invested that before, you know, mm-hmm. we'll do, we'll, we will bring you, we'll build you all your funnels and this and that. And I'm like, no, that's that. Nope. That's yeah, not nope. So I kind of wasn't looking. I was more kind of observing and waiting mm. to see 
who showed up, what showed up, what came across my radar mm -hmm. is kind of how it worked. Mm -hmm. And what happened? What came across the radar? How did you actually find out about what, you know, um, we're doing in the 100K course? Um, so I think that I had gotten a friend request from you and I didn't accept it for a while. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> had to prove myself <laughs> before you said I yes. Didn't yes. Accept it right away. <laughs> yes. Um, but of course, like, you know, woohoo, thank you, Facebook, because if you look at somebody's profile or something, suddenly they start showing you their videos. Mm hmm kind of thing. Um, so eventually, and then I saw that you worked, you know, with people from my industry, hypnotherapy, et cetera, other industries. I'm like, oh, what the hell? He can't be that bad of a guy. So I did accept your friend request. Thank <laughs> you very much. Welcome. And the process began. Yes. <laughs> the process began. <laughs> um, and again, I think it was like the content that I was seeing. I started to see some posts, this and that. I saw um, the webinar and I mean, we're all inundated. Everybody's got a webinar. Show up at this webinar and it's like, oh great, it's going to be a webinar with a $15,000 sales pitch at the end kind mm -hmm. of thing. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, but it's actually the interesting thing was, is I saw a couple familiar faces. Okay. Actually people that I was at training with in April last year. Oh, they're actually at your course. Okay. They were at my course last year. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, well, let me go look at this. So I went to your page, watched through your videos, saw some of the testimonials. Then I couldn't get the webinar registration to work. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, I actually remember that. that. I remember that message. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like I couldn't get it to work. Yep. And I'm like, I think you have what I need. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty interested, but I'm not, I can't get the webinar to work. And I know it sounds stupid, but I just want to watch the webinar. To yeah, see that was payback works. for not accepting my friend request. That was all on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I remember I'm that sure. message. Yeah. I remember I mean, that message and I had to sort it out for you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure I deserved that. Totally. Yes. Um, and so I really wanted to hear what you had to say. And when you talked about, you know, when you talked about systems, and even just the information I got from the webinar, I had downloaded the Therapy Maximizer playbook. I knew you knew you knew how to systematize a business, mm -hmm. this kind of business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great. That's 80% of the problem right there. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you didn't sell me a $15,000 coaching no. program no. for 12 months and this and that. And it was like, nope, action right away. And I'm like, great, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. the right. So that was it. Yeah, because we we jumped on a strategy call as well. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, um, and I remember. Yes, I, we we did. Yeah, because um, I remember we talked a lot about the systems and the protocol and stuff like that. So once you join the program, what obviously week one is my favorite. That's all systems and understanding how to view your business. What was that like for you in comparison to the other things that you were trying or the other courses that you'd been on? What was different for you? Um, there were two things about it. First of all, it was very focused and very specific actions. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it was theory. Yes, here's the theory and the understanding, but now go do these things. Mm -hmm. And the very first thing, which is the hardest thing, and I had struggled with it, and I knew I was struggling with it, was clarity. Mm -hmm. And clarity and niche. And that was the first work. And I knew that if I didn't get super specific, it wasn't mm -hmm. going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so that was week one. Um, it felt really good to have a very specific plan and goal mm -hmm. and with very specific actions that got interaction and action right away. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was right out of the gates. I'm like, yep, I, this is perfect because this keep this gets me, I have a plan of attack every single day of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So yeah. when you were getting clarity, what, what niches or what solutions, like what were you trying to work out in your head? What ideas did you have? Um, so I had, so it's, I don't know how to not, I don't want to sound rude when I say this, but I knew that there was a certain um, professional education of person that I wanted to work with. And mm -hmm. In when we get into helping people heal emotional wounds and trauma and things like that, right? <clears throat> there are a lot of people in this world who have have emotional baggage and a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. But the one thing I knew that, that if you're going to have a business, you have to have a business that people will pay for. Exactly. 
Yep. And so it was, are the people who are stuck in years of depression or anxiety, are they going to pay? No, because they really don't even believe anything works. Mm -hmm. I agree with you hundred percent. And so I knew I, I knew. And even when I started out, I went back to, I got a professional professional designation. I take myself as a professional because I knew I wanted to work with professionals mm. because they, they have a, a thing that they're doing, they're working on. And it really, and it really kind of was um, professionals um, that are, uh, that really the thing about professionals or I call them high achievers, <laughs> right? They're kind of very action driven, success driven, mm -hmm. goal driven kind of thing. Um, but doing that over a period of time, there's a level of unsatisfaction and kind of uh, setbacks and things that happen that kind of erode their confidence. Okay. So it's not that they didn't have confidence, it's that they didn't understand why it wasn't working. <laughs> so, gotcha. right. So it's kind of the professionals that are high achievers, et cetera, that kind of hit the burnout confidence was eroding right and that's a really uncomfortable space <laughs> to be in for those yeah. for those people because they're used to getting things done yeah um so that's kind of what i was really targeting and, and working on mm -hmm. um initially and i didn't have all the i didn't have all the clear words and stuff for it but that's mm -hmm. where i was okay and uh when you got clarity on it is that has it did it change much did it oscillate from around different words or different sort of professions or was it just about getting really clear in your mind who you want to target and just sort of ignoring everything else it really it was about me getting really clear in my mind who i wanted to work with and letting everything else go without feeling guilty about it wonderful it's a nice feeling isn't it it's is a very nice feeling mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what was the solution that you figured out that you know what this is this is what my niche needs these are what these people need and if i can provide this we can make a business out of this so what was that solution um, so the solution for them is, and it's interesting because mine, it's kind of like the even further niche. So it was really around professionals who had changed careers oh, okay. got into business for themselves because it's kind of like those next chapter professionals, right? Mm -hmm. It's not their first rodeo. They're in their second rodeo or so, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's the kind of the same thing. They need to stop playing around. <laughs> yes. But this, the shift or the something like they're not having, they, they've been in it, they've made the shift, they're in it, but they're not having the success. They're not having the results that they want. They're not getting the same level of success that they had before. Um, and it really was, they're just really needed to shift some, they really needed to shift some mindset and value, self-value mm -hmm. um, things about themselves. And uh and typically there were some personal things and career things. So being able to work on to say, great, let's get the career things worked out. And then also mm -hmm. let's help the personal relationships. Because mm -hmm. most of them have families married or married, divorced, next relationships, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it really was that kind of putting to bed crap from the past that they hadn't really put to bed, but we mm -hmm. don't really talk about it either. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. We don't really talk about it um, because I'm a professional and I'm working through, I'm, I'm out in the world and I'm successful. I don't have issues, right? Yes. Um, but it really was working with them to put behind all the things that created all the insecurities that they had originally, they thought they had overcome, mm -hmm. that hadn't really overcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and finally putting them behind and getting them to move forward and really make those next steps forward. Awesome. Yeah. So getting crystal clear on that, we've got a defined solution. We've got a defined niche what happened next? Because obviously that's what we do in week one of the program. We basically build your product, this thing that you're going to be known for. What happened next? Uh, I got, I got all new clients. I just got a whole new influx of all new clients that mm -hmm. came ready to do their work. Wonderful. And yeah. And well, so not only the clarity in the client, but the, the other piece that I forgot about that was so important was method of service. Mm -hmm. Minimal operating cert, right? Minimum MLS. Uh, yep. MLS dealing with, you know, one product, one price, one delivery, man, that just flew. Like it <laughs> suddenly a whole new set of clients showed up and here was the program. Here's how I do it. Mm -hmm. Here's the package price. And it, and I had back to back $4,500 weeks, just like boom, awesome. boom. just quick as can be. Awesome. And the clients that came, were quality clients. They were invested. They were mm -hmm. invested in themselves. 
they have they have done the best work on themselves mm-hmm. um i think you know everybody thinks that we have magic tools that we do um, <laughs> yeah. just to just guide them to yes. their own things. yes yes that's it <laughs> everything's we have these magic things but yes. um uh and it was awesome because i could tell my clients you'll get out of this what you put into it wonderful you have total control. Um, I'm really just a tour guide to help lead you and guide you through this process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want it to work, gotta then do the work. you got to do the work. Mm-hmm. And um, that just really, it really changed things. And it was in, it, like, even those clients started sending me like friends or family, et cetera, right away and say, okay, we're going to do this. Yeah. We're, this works. We're doing this. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. That's awesome. So before MOS, you know, the, for the minimum optimum service, so having just like the least amount of time to work with your clients to give them the biggest result, how were you selling your service? Was it hours, sessions? Was it that sort of old model or what were you doing? Um, I did have a package model because I had last year realized that selling sessions was going to drive me insane. It was mm. like trying to stack a chiropractor's office. With, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, nope, that's not going to work. Um, and I did learn from my clients, your clients tell you what they want, Mm. right? They tell you what is valuable to them. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. It wasn't necessarily, it wasn't just in the session. It was really the change they were experiencing after that for like about 30 days or so. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like they wanted this place to check in and say, am I doing this right? Is this Mm -hmm. supposed to be happening kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And so I had gotten some, a little bit of guidance and tidbit information last year that said, Hey, offer packages, right? Offer a session for the, you know, hypnotherapy, but then offer the follow-up mentoring support because people really like that. And so Mm -hmm. I had put that in play and it worked and people do like it. Uh, But how I was doing it is I was offering like a 30 day or a 90 day. That's, I was, it was kind of low level, higher level. Yes. Um, And um, when I started in week one, one of the things that I did is I went back and looked at all the clients I worked with last over the last year mm-hmm. and just kind of started looking at the data, right? Age issues, career, mm-hmm. like, you know, common patterns, right? What came mm-hmm. up, what they were, what came up out of sessions, this and that, and kind of common things. And it was interesting. The ones that kind of only did like one session with the support wished they had done more. Mm-hmm. And the ones who did three really weren't, it was too much. Like, and so it came up with a great, easy kind of six, eight week process because mm-hmm. that kind of was the right fit. And then they were really ready to go on and, and move on and move forward. Yeah. So a big difference from 90 days. Huge difference. Mm. Yeah. Huge yeah. difference. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And it was easier, easier to communicate. It was easier to get people to understand and get <laughs> their heads wrapped around. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't too long. People don't want 90 days, six months, 12 months. They're like, mm-hmm. just get it done. Just get it done. Let's get it done. So I can go live my life. That's I it. Got things that's to what do. we're saying. Yeah. That's what we're selling. Yeah. You sell right. that MOS. So I, yeah, do. when you hit the, uh, the 10,000 in yeah, two weeks, so two back to back $4,500 weeks, what was yeah. that like? Was that like a sigh of relief? Like, wow, this is working. You know, what, what was going through your mind? Fun. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Right. A heck of a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, consult calls became a lot more fun. And, right. Well, and then all the work becomes fun mm. because you're like, yeah, this works, right? Your belief in yourself, your belief in the process starts mm-hmm. getting in and like, this is fun. Mm-hmm. And my job is fun. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, yeah, the clients, like I said, the quality of clients was amazing mm-hmm. and it made the work fun a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and even just the interaction and follow up with the clients in terms of their change and stuff, it just up leveled everything significantly. That's awesome. So So, like if you compare what you were doing last year to now, especially with the system side of thing, are you noticing that it's like, it's easy to control. It's easy to maintain. There's not as many moving parts. It's not confusing. Are you noticing that now? Very much so. Mm. Um, and if things, if, if, they're th- if things are slow, I'm like, okay, that's my, that's on me. Mm. Right. Cause here's the th- five things I need to do every day. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. If I'm not doing those things. It's not, ha- and then it's not happening. Mm-hmm. So it's almost a sense of control yes. of influence instead of this grasping. Mm-hmm. Right. Instead of feeling like you're grasping at straws, it's mm. sit your butt down and get the, and damn get the work, work done. done. Yeah. <laughs> 
in comparison, yeah, in comparison to like waking up and going, what should I do today? Should I network? Should I do a podcast? Should I do this? Should I do that? Now you've got no choice. You've got what you need to do. And like you said, it's up to you to do it. And if you don't, that's on you, not the grasping at straws thing. Right. Yeah. Nobody else's fault, but my own now. Mm -hmm. And I'm in charge and I'm the boss and it's my business. Mm -hmm. Take control of it. (laughs) Take control of it. And it's easier to manage. Like it's clear because I know the the places where I'm going to be, the things Mm -hmm. that I'm doing, the steps that I'm taking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if there's not stuff going on, it's like, yeah, get, get back on your schedule. Stop screwing around. Mm -hmm. Let's get to work, focus Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. and keep going. Start building up those fractals. Start, yes. Yeah, start building up the fractals, right? Did you, post, did you put your post on link? Did you put your video on link on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Did you put it on LinkedIn, right? Have mm. you sent your messages? Have you, you know, before you whine and complain about what's not in your bank account, check your, to check your action list. That's it. It's all inputs. Yeah. It's all inputs. And if your inputs didn't, you didn't do the inputs, then you're not getting the outputs. So go get the inputs going. <laughs> Seems so simple, but everyone looks at the outputs and goes, where's all my money? I'm not getting clients, I'm not making money, but I'm going to ignore, I've done nothing in my business for a whole week. You know, this should just come to me because I've got the best results in the industry. No, inputs comes first. Inputs comes first. If nobody knows you exist, mm. you don't have a business. Yeah. Moving it's into, hard. yeah. Moving into week two and realizing that there's a lot for you to do. What was that like for you to understand the social media, the dichotomies of how we treat social media, Facebook lives, YouTube. What was like, what was that like for you moving into that probably because you weren't doing any of that stuff before or not a lot of social media. Like you said, what was it like to now get full control over your marketing as well? Right. Um, It was definitely a different mindset. Um, It's not that I wasn't doing social media. I just wasn't doing it for this intention and purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. It was, kind of, but not all in, right? Mm-hmm. It, it was toying around and this and that. So, um, so coming from a tech background, like, uh, you know, I know all the social medias, I know how they all work, that kind of thing. Um, it was, it was a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. Even for someone like me, it was a lot of work. Like yep. I heads down, get to work, get through these steps one thing at a time, like do it. And at times you're, you know, the voice creeps up and it's like, why am I doing this again? Like, <laughs> sure this is going to work. Like, okay, shut up. Don't think, just work. Like, yep. just stop do thinking. It. Yep. Just stop thinking, just keep doing kind of thing. Um, and so there was a lot there, probably the biggest thing for me. Um, and I think other people probably relate to this too, is like the organic outreach, sending messages, this and that. Mm-hmm. And, and it was kind of like, wait, I have tools for that. Like, you know, we, there's a wiring in there, right? And so it's like, we, we know what tools to use. So mm. go get your own damn tool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Figure out what the wiring is going on up there and mm-hmm. then just start doing it. Um, and so, you know, it was one of those things that was just like, okay, it's a little bit of work. It was a little bit of overwhelm and it was just Mm -hmm. like, but no, I committed to doing it and Mm -hmm. we're going to make it and we're just Mm going to just start doing it Mm -hmm. and just start. And Mm -hmm. that it just, that's how kind of, how it kind of went. So it made sense. It was much more, it was so much easier though. Um, just knowing how the pieces were connected. Mm -hmm. And the coolest thing was knowing that where we, where the, everybody was being driven to the same thing. That's by design. That's, the, that's by design, right? So that's the biggest thing with marketing and having this lead page and this, that thing. And, and it's like, you got 55, you're scattered <laughs> everywhere. Yep. And this process was so cool because it doesn't, it doesn't, everything leads to a thing. And a mm-hmm. thing is this conversation of you're in this pain Mm-hmm. Here is the process and service that solves that. Mm-hmm. Here's the pr- the price. Does it fit or not? Mm-hmm. And that makes it really simple. Mm-hmm. Even if people refer me, I still put them in the same process. That's Here's my point. strategy call link. Mm-hmm. I've it's the same process with everybody. I have the same conversation. I follow the same rhythm. I follow the same path. Like it's just rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and mm-hmm. rinse and repeat. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's no control. Thing. No thinking that 
is control. That's a yeah. system. A system works without anyone having to influence it. Once it goes, it goes. It's your job just every morning to press the start on that system and just it's going to be like groundhog every day. Um, but yeah, you're right. You know, everyone talks about that organic outreach and it is one of the toughest things to do. But it's such a short-term quick strategy that if someone says, yes, hell yes, I want to jump on a call, it makes those butterflies and that anxiety go away pretty quickly. But um, it, like you said, it's a lot of work. I think people... I think business owners in general, I did as well. We underestimate how big or how much work a business, uh, how much work you have to do to grow the business to a certain extent. Now you're at a level where you're going to be doing $10,000 a month every month. Wait till we get to 20 and 30 and 40. We have to keep growing that system. And it's not that we do, we add more complexity. We just refine everything you do. So even taking your close rate from, let's say 70% 70 to 80%, your income goes up yep. every 10 organic outreach messages you do in the past, you got five responses. Now you're getting eight responses. And again, yeah. income grows. So like you yeah. said, it's like a learning phase you're going through and it's going to take, you know, take some time to get it right to the point where you do a Facebook live and it books out your whole entire calendar worth of clients. Yep. It's what's in store. That's what coming. If you stick to it, if you keep right. pushing that system. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, what are you I'm, working I'm on? Forward, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'm looking, on, I'm looking forward to that next. Mm. So now it's really kind of, I feel like I'm in the refining piece. Mm -hmm. about Right. And it's funny because even when we do the first niche mm -hmm. and you say we kind of come back and refine it, it's even like after five or six clients, it's like, oh, let me refine this language. Yep. Just a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because even what happened organically, and I don't even know how it happened, is I went from working with 80% women, 20% men, mm -hmm. that my business is almost completely, has almost flipped. Wow. And I'm working with probably 70% men and 30% wow. women. Yeah. And why do you think um, that is? So what I think that men like about this process is it's solution oriented. Mm. And we're solving, we're, we're offering results for a solution for right now. Not, we don't, I don't really, it's not that I don't care, but I don't really care about all the problems in your life. All I care about is the one problem you want to solve. Brilliant. And we get right to work. We work on root cause right now, right away. You mm -hmm. know what it is and you feel and know that change in seven to 10 days, no matter what else is going on. And so <laughs> And I think men like that, right? Mm -hmm. I worked in the, and well, and I worked in IT for 20 years. So There's a lot of times where I was the only female in the room. <laughs> yeah, you learn a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot, yeah. <laughs> right? I learned a lot. Um, and uh, I think, you know, men can relate quite a bit to, they like the relating to, mm. you know, up, upgrading your program, right? Mm -hmm. Finding the root cause in your mainframe, changing your programming, this and that. And I mm -hmm. think language like that, they, re they relate to mm -hmm. where women, we use a different language. We do, we're kind of, you know, um, we do, we want, you know, we want to be heard and share our problems mm -hmm. and feel like other people feel like we do. We spend more mm -hmm. time in our feeling space and men are like, you're going to get in there and fix that. Awesome. Let's get after Let's that. Do and it. In fact, I, it. <laughs> one of my clients, one of my male clients was awesome. Um, <clears throat> After his hypnotherapy session, he goes, you got to the root of something in two hours that I worked with a therapist for two years and never got to. Wow. Isn't that awesome? I'm like, then I'm on it. Yes. Then we're doing it right. Yeah. And I'm like, great. How does that feel to be like mm -hmm. over, done? He mm -hmm. goes, I'll tell you next week. I'm like, no. <laughs> that's what <laughs> happens. Like I said, that's like, that's mm. kind of the part afterwards, like 10, you know, seven days afterwards, 14 mm -hmm. days afterwards it's the other changes and things that happen mm. that they're like, I didn't realize this was going to happen. Like yeah. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. All these mm. other little things. And instead of working on all their problems, it's just, what's the biggest pain in your life right now? Mm -hmm. And if that's the biggest pain in your life, let's just solve for that. Who cares about all the other pains in life? Yeah. All of those things are going to be taken care of as an aggregate to the big one anyway. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And they and like I the root cause. They mm. like getting to the issue. They don't want to mess around with it. <laughs> Um, yeah. and it's interesting because men do talk. Mm. They do. If you let They're them, like, they will. Oh yeah. If you let them, they will. And it's, <laughs> so it's interesting. They'll be like, you, they'll like, somebody be like, dude, you're, you know, 
you've got some confidence going and stuff. And they're mm-hmm. like, what do you do? And they're like, you just need to go call my girl. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, so- all of that comes from, you know, getting a so clearly defined on your niche, but also getting so clearly defined on a solution. So yeah. you know what to head for. They know what to head for. If the solution you're selling is vague, for one reason, you might be able to sell it because people won't know what they're getting. And two, if they do buy it, where are you taking them? If the solution is like, at the end of it, you'll just feel better. Like, what the hell does that mean? We want to get so clearly defined, and especially for men, I agree with you. We want that, 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 and that. And if you can give me all these things, bang, I'm in it. No second thought, let's do this. Yeah. And if you tell me it's going to do these things, I expect it to do these things. That's the next one. Yeah. That's the next one, right? Yeah. And, and it kind of work that way. If you tell me this is going to do this, this, and this, I expect it to do this, this, and mm-hmm. this. Well, that's a really, that's easy to deliver on. That's yeah. not difficult to deliver on at all. Yeah. That's, so, um, you know, and it defeats the purpose. You know, when I talk to therapists and coaches and I say, what's the solution? And they say, well, I give my client whatever solution they want. You can't sell that. Because it's so vague, how can you sell that repetitively in a system? Remember, system just supposed to do. Every time you've got to get to the end of the call, you know, on a strategy call, and they say, well, what am I going to get? Um, well, you'll sort of get it. You've already lost it. Yeah. I can imagine why these. To, yeah. Yeah. It has to be clear. It has to be to the point. Mm-hmm. And even the, even, um, even the female clients that have come, mm-hmm. it's interesting. They're, they're kind of at that higher level. They're, mm-hmm. you know, they either have been business professionals and they're in a the next career or, you know, they're, they're driven, they're motivated. They're like at the point, like I'm done messing around. <laughs> I want results. I know that I'm doing, I know that I'm the reason I'm holding myself back mm-hmm. and I'm tired of it. I don't know what else to do. I obviously can't see it. Like, whatever it is, I just need to know because then I'll change it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that's kind of, that's kind of fun because I'm kind of the person that I tell people like you've, you've done the coaching, you've read the books, you've watched (laughs) the webinars, you've done right. All of that's the high achiever kind of thing, right? They're going to go looking for solutions. They're going to try things on their own first. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they're going to go, I don't get this. And I'm like, and so when people tell me, I'm just frustrated because I've tried all the things and it's not changing. And I'm like, oh, then you're ready. Perfect. That's, <laughs> That's where I come in. Work. Yeah. Right. Now, like, I feel like they make my job easy. <laughs> yeah. Because they know because what they, not to work. Let's just go with what works. Right. Exactly. Or they've got enough of other pieces of other things mm-hmm. that when we bring this in, it's like suddenly everything just fits in together. Yeah. You're just piecing that puzzle together strategically. Yeah, you're just hitting the spot that just needed to be changed or to mm-hmm. get found or whatever that just makes all the rest of it. And it's like, they go. Yeah, and absolutely. So It's a lot more fun working in that space. Yeah, too. I think having such a clearly defined outcome for your clients and your business and your price and your offer, when you take out all the guesswork and the confusion, business becomes fun again. Whereas now as most coaches and therapists, they've lost that joy because it's such a struggle to even think of what to do causes anxiety, overwhelm. And that's one of the first pieces we have to get rid of, get rid of the chaos, have clearly defined systems that actually work for you. Exactly. Exactly. So knowing where you are now, what were like, what problems so far? Cause you haven't been in the course. You haven't been in the course for that long. Um, What problems has it solved for you as a business owner, not even just a therapist, but an actual business owner and entrepreneur? Um, clarity mm-hmm. right what should i be doing when should i be doing it what's the most important thing that's right out of the gates that's that's kind of that's the biggest thing mm-hmm. right and if you know that then you know what to be doing mm-hmm. it's the, there's no more overwhelm there's no more crazy there's no let me try this today and that tomorrow <laughs> and, nope it's really clear here's okay. what i do right that clarity the consistency that is essential mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you, what do you see as far as because you're you're probably networking with other therapists and coaches? What do you see their biggest pain is like? What what they need to be solving? Um, for their business or for their clients? All of it. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's the same thing. I've I mean I've talked to coaches and I'm like, so what do you do? 
um, well, I'm an executive coach. I'm like, no, that's your title. What is it that you do? <laughs> right. Yeah. And so it's interesting because I see we people, they speak the professional speak, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a professional, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, great. If I want to collaborate with you, if I want to refer people to you after what they're done with me, how do I know what you do and that you're the person to help them? Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's kind of the same thing is I don't, I see a lot of them. Now I have a few coaches that I, that they're crystal clear. Mm -hmm. They work with professional women who have left the corporate world to launch their own businesses. Great. I know to send my client, right? Cause they have a business process mm -hmm. and business steps they follow. I know exactly like my clients that come through and work on confidence or self value or things like that to shift into that business owner mindset. It's like, mm -hmm. great. Now they're going to go help you with the execution. We've done that work. Go. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but I think it's the, the struggle with other, with other coaches and, and therapists and stuff is, who we want to help everybody we have the open hearts of the world yeah. like we want to we want to help everybody and it's like who yeah you're going to help people that come to you that follow the outliers but what is the main lane that you're mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. who do you support what is the result you provide for them etc mm -hmm. um and so yeah that's kind of the biggest thing for me it's like if i could put people through like pieces of your course like it's like, it's like, Scott, I'm just going to plug people into like modules one, two, three of people for they, because it was like, kind of like, if you don't have that foundation, if you don't know who you're talking to mm -hmm. and why they want to talk to you, you're just wasting time and energy mm -hmm. and you never get them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like everyone's looking for the marketing, the funnel, the Facebook ads, LinkedIn strategy, YouTube strategy. They go for that first. Yeah. Before they get foundation, before they get niche, before they get offer. And the funny yeah. thing is, the better you define the niche, as you're finding out, which is really interesting, the better you define the niche and the solution, the worse you can be at marketing. Because the marketing oh, has kidding. nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's all yeah. solution. Your clients will come to you based on just the solution you have. And that's a way easier business model to run. It's much easier. In fact, it now I understand why before like I, no, no marketing person or any like should ever accept anybody's money if they don't have like a certain foundation mm. piece, right? And if mm. not, you got to have that person that you refer to them that says, "Go get what, go get this." Then we know how to execute for you because mm -hmm. if you don't know this foundation piece, you have no clue how to execute. That's right. You're just like, sh just gr like I said, grasping at straws and just. Mm -hmm all over the place. So having that focus, that consistency, knowing what you're looking for mm -hmm. and it makes it, it makes it people for easy to say, Oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. That's all supposed to do. And you know, what it's supposed to do, and you know what language you're supposed to speak and mm -hmm. you know, right. You just, you get into a rhythm and pattern, you know, what language to speak mm -hmm. and you can, even if you do decide, like I still do go networking mm -hmm. and I say the same thing at networking <laughs> that I say online that I say on every platform, right? It's consistency. You go to any of my profiles, they say mm -hmm. the same thing. You may be in a networking event. I say the same, same thing, thing. Mm -hmm. all the time. And it's consistent and it mm -hmm. never wavers. And I don't even worry about it. And it's like the last problem on my mind. That's awesome. That's systems. Yeah. <laughs> it's systems and it That's works. It. Right. And so it's like, okay, it took me to get here. Now what's next? <laughs> like, yeah. That's actually my next question. What is the goal for you? Like, where are you headed next? Knowing that, yeah, you're probably at the refining, defining phase. Okay. Which is really exciting because we can really add some more strategic inputs to this to just, you know, increase the percentage of certain things in the system. What is next for you? What are you working on in the background? What is the goal towards the end of the year? Right. Um, so the goal towards the end of the year is to prove a, a specific system pattern process with a particular client Wonderful. that then is, that's then scalable, right? <clears throat> so that, that's either grouping mm -hmm. or being able to take pieces of like, there are things I'm even learning right now for my clients that I could put in videos to give them access to instead of me saying it over and over. There you go. Wonderful. Every week, right. So what are other little things that I'm doing with every single person 
that I can automate or put mm -hmm. into another type of system step that does it for me. Mm -hmm. They still get the benefit. They're still getting my support. But where can I be hands off mm -hmm. in places? Mm -hmm. um, I think part of it is too is like the proof and consistency. Um, you know, the the goal is be, is about sixteen to twenty grand. That's kind of like if I can run and repeat that. Mm -hmm. I keep saying if I can just do this for three months and then I do it and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta, <laughs> I'm like, shit, no, I gotta do it. Right. Yep, now you can do it. Um, but it's kind of that piece of like, well, now it's to the point where I'm getting the right clients and going through the same process. Now I'm learning like, okay, um, where is it that I can hands off? Mm -hmm. Right. And still provide the value for my clients that they're supported Mm -hmm. through this journey process. And then at what point have I proved a, a particular problem solution mm -hmm. for a niche that I could put and and then put into like a group program mm -hmm. or more of a self-service, maybe level one self-service kind of thing that would be easy to put together. So it's kind of more because I there's only so many office hours I can work a week mm -hmm. in a month. Um and you know and then go from there. Um yeah and so that's kind of that's kind of next part of me feels like once I do this, it, I feel like I'm the person that goes back and helps some of the therapists and other coaches and stuff yep. and says, Hey, let me teach you how to do this. Wonderful. Kind of thing yeah. because there's an easier way and let's do this for you. Cause yeah. there's other people out there that have really awesome services and value to add mm -hmm. that, you know, deserve to have that process yeah, too. So absolutely. Kind of see where, that, where that goes, but yeah. um, I definitely want to be, I will, I would want my one-on-one -on -one time to be kind of more premium mm -hmm. and kind of shift that time exchange model towards yeah. the end of the year. That's what so. happens. So you what will happen is everyone will reach a bottleneck of time. Yeah. You only have so many office hours. We can only distribute that 80, 20 rule so far. We can only, you know, stretch it and leach it in certain positions. And that yeah. usually happens at about 10 to 20 grand a month. So that's something to look forward to. And then what we do, like you said, we take your proof of concept, we turn it into something that's more automated. So we can automate the sales, you can automate the breakthroughs your clients have. And it's sort of like what we do, like I'm just there for support. I'm there just to make sure that, you know, you're heading in the right direction. I'm there to, you know, help you ignore all the other distractions. But when yeah. you automate that part, your clients will get better results because they can work on themselves. And yeah, absolutely, your face to face, which is let's say two and a half thousand dollars now becomes premium service at five, seven and a half, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And you'll find clients will actually want that as part of the program. They'll actually ask you for that time. Yeah. But even if they don't, you've automated the part that's bringing you money. You automate the sales, you control that. So you can sleep at night and make money. Yeah. And then just oscillate between that because everyone has to evolve through that. Everyone will go through that. And it's just quite funny. You're actually getting there pretty quickly, which is quite cool. So your next evolution is going to come very yeah. soon. If you just keep pushing the system the way that you are. Yeah. Well, awesome. there's no reason to stop. Like That's it. why stop? Don't, That's it. don't fix what's broke. Don't fix what's not broken. Just yeah. keep going. <laughs> That's it. Don't, don't right. screw with the pipe. If the pipe is feeding you food, don't screw with the pipe. That's right. Just Wonderful. Keep feeding the pipe and just keep <laughs> That's going. It. Keep collecting that food. Absolutely. Keep so, Fun. What what has been the biggest aha moment for you so far, and what words of advice would you have for therapists that have maybe been in your position before, trying to break into their business, trying to get it moving forward? What would you say? <clears throat> um, the biggest thing is realizing that you own a business. There's a service. Mm. The therapy is the tool. Yes, it's not the business. Mm. It's just the tool. It's just a service if you changed therapy, if you changed whatever, your business doesn't have to change, mm -hmm. right? If you do the foundational pieces of business ownership mm -hmm. and, and also get clear, what's the intention for your business, right? Is your intention for the business to be a six figure business owner? Then you have to act and think mm -hmm. like a six figure business owner, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I think the thing is, is that what's been awesome is in doing this, I have the opportunity, right? If somebody comes in or I get referred like a teenager or something like that, that doesn't fit this, it doesn't, I can say, yeah, no worries, right? I can do this work. And it does, I don't put them through that pipe, right? I can mm -hmm. give 
but I can give my passion time Mm -hmm. when I want to without the pressure of, Oh my God, how am I going to keep my business going and pay my bills and feed my family and that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so it's take yourself seriously because it is a, it is a business. It is, Mm -hmm. you are here to serve, you are here, but you're also here to what, what kind of earning, what kind of living do you want to earn? Mm -hmm. Right. And just get clear on that and then build a process and et cetera, that fits that, Mm -hmm. right. There might be people that are happy with like like seven to 10 grand a month. Like that might be the most they want to do. And they're comfortable in that place. Mm -hmm. Great. Do that. Rinse and repeat, run that Mm -hmm. because you, we get caught between the, here's my purpose and passion in life versus I want to be a business owner and make money and have time freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. so we kind of get that that mix and it's like get your business going and be a business and you'll get going and it gives you that freedom to just show up in your purpose and your passion in different ways without Mm -hmm. expectation of monetizing it Mm -hmm. right kind of like last year when I did the contracting work and then and worked on my business I took the pressure off the off my business Mm -hmm. and allowed it to organically grow and move Mm -hmm. forward and right and so if you take that pressure off of it it just allows it to move in the direction it's going to. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then you'll you know where it. Goes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go, great, I'm going to move it forward in that way. But we get kind of like, I need to do this. And this is the only, you know, the only way. <laughs> and, well, yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, that mindset is the biggest one. Like we're therapists, we're coaches. I am too, but you're a business owner with yeah. equally more proportions or even more than the therapist or coach. So you have to take that therapy hat off. You have to become an entrepreneur, a business owner, someone who loves systems and sales and marketing. Because if you don't, like you said, you're forever grabbing straws like, God, I hope a client comes in today. I need to pay my bills rather than where you are. We don't worry about that. It's okay. How can I level up in the business? What new systems, what new things can I do to get even further ahead? That's a big difference, especially for your own sanity as well. Right. Well, it's almost being like you got you got to shift out of just being the doer role Mm -hmm. to being the strategizer role. Mm -hmm. And you've got to make that shift because if you can't get there, it's not, it's, you're going to struggle. Like Mm -hmm. just go get a job with someone, go be, go get a a, a therapist job in a clinic or something. Right. Mm -hmm. If you just want to be the doer of the service, that's okay. Yeah. I work for somewhere else. Yeah. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Mm -hmm it takes the pressure off, but you can't be the doer, doer. You got to come up a level and you've got to see the strategy in the bigger picture mm-hmm. and detach from the only value I have is the doer. Mm-hmm. Because if you have nobody to do it for, there's no value there anyway. That's right. And you're in the same place. Yeah. You're in the same place. So yeah. do you want to be a business owner? That's kind of like the biggest mindset shift, right? Mm-hmm. Nope. You run a business and a business owner does the things to get mm-hmm. the business running the doing just becomes just a small piece of it. Yes. The 80, 20 rule. Yeah. The 80, 20 rule. And so, um, and that's even the same thing for people like leaving corporate and going into business, right? Mm -hmm. I was a doer. I had a job and I got paid to provide this value (laughs) because my title gave me expertise. Mm -hmm. Right. And now it's like, no, you're out there selling your expertise every day. Mm -hmm. You've got to sell your, you're selling yourself every single day. Just Mm -hmm. get over it, get comfortable with it. Love it embrace mm-hmm. it and do it. Just right? do it. Get a, head it. over it. Yeah. I love Get that. over it and do it because nobody cares just because you have a business name and a business card. They don't care. No, they want right. to know what is your expertise. You have to sell yourself to the whole world mm-hmm. every single day. So just wake up every morning and say, my job today is to sell myself <laughs> to the world and just yep. smile and move on. And if you're having a shitty day, don't go selling yourself to the world. Just that's right. Stick to the plan. To <laughs> yeah, stick to the plan. Absolutely. So the behind the scenes things yeah. that day. Don't go out. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Turn off social media. Yeah. Don't don't turn get on off. that. Yeah. Turn off the camera. Love it. Click it. Yeah. What um? So for the last question, last words of advice. Knowing that a lot of therapists and coaches are going to watch this, what some words of advice or words of wisdom, knowing where you are now, that they need to hear. Um. So first of all, this has been hands down one of the best programs I've ever invested in in my life. Mm -hmm. Totally worth the value. You should probably charge us more, Scott. Um, Everyone says that. I think I might do that. (laughs) You might need to do that. I'm not saying. It's interesting. No, the value is, I mean, I've made my investment back in spades. Mm -hmm. Right. So the value is obviously there and proven and I'm still going. I haven't even gotten 
through all the content that I get. So yeah. I'm still going. Um, and um, there's no, don't str stop struggling. Just, it's not fun to struggle. There's mm. no reason to struggle. People deserve the help that we have mm. to offer. Mm -hmm. And we, and, and it's, it provides, it puts out a level of professionalism in our industry mm. that's so needed. Yes, it right? is. Take yourself seriously as a professional. You are, we are, we've invested thousands of dollars and hours and stuff in our, mm -hmm. you know, other people more so than me. I mean, I'm still young in this game. Right. Um, but, and it's like, and it's treat yourself as a professional, take mm -hmm. yourself as a professional and, and it, it, it lends credibility to everybody else in the industry too. It does. And provides a level of professionalism to the, to everybody. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's it's crystal clear. Yeah. Love so, it. So thanks. for anybody watching this that, um, you know, would want to get in contact with you, um, can you just let them know where they can find you and like, who is your ideal client? Sure. Um, so you can find me online, Andrea DeLeon, um, on my Facebook personal page. You can find me on YouTube, find me on LinkedIn. It's my website name, super easy. And I work with professionals who are in their next chapter to who are feeling stuck and frustrated to change from that to feeling confident, capable, accomplished, and enjoying and loving their next level of success. Crystal clear. Love it. Fantastic. There. Every All day. Right. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I love that chat. It's good to see. Well, not even good. It's just tremendous. Like if I could, I think I'll start, have to start capturing you guys before you start the program to where you are now. So people can see even just the way you talk about an hour is different than what we first had on the call. I wish we could show that, but congratulations so far. And like you said, you're just beginning. Like you've got a long way to go. Like this is just the start for you, which is awesome. So thank you so much for your time. I know it's super, probably super late where you are now. So I'm going to let you have a rest before you get up and do it all again tomorrow. We'll see you over in the group, Andrea. Thank you so much. Uh, that was my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. All right. We'll see you in the group. Thanks, Andrea. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.